11 years ago or since 2013, Apple has been using different California landmarks to be the name of the next upcoming macOS software name. We recently got Sonoma, we got Big Sur and other landmarks and this year is no exception. The leading candidate for last year's macOS update was actually macOS Mammoth but Sonoma ended up taking the lead. But this year we have some pretty good potential candidates for the name of macOS 15. The first one being Mammoth and then and the second one being Sequoia. Here's a list of the California landmarks that have the potential to be the next name for macOS 15. Let me know from this list which one you prefer or is your favorite and you'd like to see macOS 15 named after. WWDC 2024 is going to take place on June 10 to 14 and this means that on Monday June 10 that's when developer beta testers will be able to get the ability to test out the first beta of Mac OS 15. For those that are on the public beta profile, then you can always expect the first public beta to come out about a month after the first developer beta comes out. And just to share this with you, here on the Apple developer page support section, you can see under the choosing membership, it still has it that OS or operating system beta releases are under the sign in with your Apple ID, which is free. What this means is that if you choose to be a developer beta, you don't have to pay any annual fee to be able to test out the first beta when it comes out first for developers because developer beta testers get the update one month before the public betas but then at the same time when it comes out to public beta testers some of the issues and bugs are usually washed away so for every ying there's a yang with that out of the way here are some changes that have been mentioned to be coming with mac os 15 by mark german now this application that you see here the system settings used to be called system preferences but it was only until mac os ventura that it was was renamed to system settings but with that change it came with an unfortunate bug or issue or limitation because we can adjust the height however we can't adjust the width of the system settings application so hopefully with the next update we do see that coming true where it gives us the flexibility to adjust it according to our need according to apple insider the system settings application is going to get one of the biggest update when it comes to mac os 15 the organizational list that you see right here is mostly haphazard and it's going to receive a reorganization based on importance and priority so some of the icons that are on the top list might not remain there and some that are on the bottom might be elevated to a higher level in terms of priority and how they affect the user and the system itself this actually makes sense because if you look at the current system settings layout we have this wi-fi section which is part of the network section so why are they two of the same thing but yet different i don't know the notifications and the sound sections together will be moved to a lower priority since they are actually the second most prioritized section after the networking and bluetooth so these two will be moved to a lower priority the general tab that you see here will be prioritized at a higher level and it's going to be moved somewhere up the chain here apple insider suggesting that this is actually going to be moved upright under the network section so putting it slightly above the notification the display wallpaper section as well as the screensaver is rumored to be moving inside the general tab and they will be like grouped together since they perform similar functions Questions? privacy and security tab here which is pretty important for the user themselves is going to be paired together with touch id and password under the same sub menu section under the siri and spotlight search i have a feeling that the siri or hey siri phrase which was recently added where you just have the ability to say siri without hey saying the hey phrase first is going to be made more available in different countries and regions the last country to get this was germany and it's expanding to more regions as well that support Siri and at the same time I don't know how this makes sense but Siri and Spotlight Search according to Apple Insider is going to be combined under internet accounts if you look at our top menu bar section here you know this is the Ecamm Live software that I'm using to record this video right here but at the same time if you look at most of the other icons that we have here like Dropbox the settings the 
users, the percentage, the network, the spotlight search and the control tab here, you can see that they have a specific color and that color is black and white, thereby making the Siri icon here an old one out. And according to Apple Insider, this icon's background as well as the overall icon itself is going to get rebranded to a plain black and white color, which I don't really know why they are doing that, especially for macOS. And since they are doing this on macOS and the Siri icon has always been the same on the Apple Watch, on the iPad, on the iPhone, does this mean that they will also do the same when it comes to the other Apple devices that utilize Siri. The lack of color in Mac OS 15 might actually be a problem if this is adopted to a wider scale. An application that's rumored to be receiving some minor updates as well is this calculator application that you see. If you open it up, it looks plain and simple. It's almost something you would need to do division, multiplication, or just a pretty simple sum. But according to Apple Insider, this is going to receive some minor updates that are aimed at making it look pretty much similar to what we have on the iPhone and iPad. I have a pretty good feeling that when it comes to the latest Mac OS 15, we'll also see some form of AI integration or artificial intelligent integration that won't just be limited to Siri or the voice assistant, but will also be maybe added to spotlight search or to some form of Mac OS within the software itself to help optimization and overall user experience. This is just a rumor, but according to different sources online, we might be able to see the ability to get printable account recovery reports for the new macOS system under the system preferences on your Apple ID. If you go to iCloud, we are going to be seeing a new menu section with iCloud performance pane. In general, if you go to AirDrop and handoff, the AirDrop that the macOS uses overly as an interface is rumored to be receiving some updates in terms of the aesthetics itself. As usual with each macOS operating system releases, we also get new wallpapers and screens savers and this is expected to come with some. The only question is are they going to be bringing landscapes or cinematic wallpapers and screen savers like the previous Mac OS version introduced. So unlike the latest iOS 18 version that's being talked about the most when it comes to AI design overhaul, Mac OS seems to be minor and hopefully we do get a stable update. It doesn't have to be as big as Big Sur when it comes to icons or sub menus or overall UI redesign. As long as we get an update that's optimized right and that's stable for more users, I think that's more of a win but let me know what you think about this video and if you're going to be updating to the first beta when it comes out on june 10. so i'll be covering mac os 15 from the first beta up to when it's officially released so if that's something that you want to see then definitely hit the like and subscribe so that you don't miss out peace